Um, I'll go get it after the first hymn. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to try this again, uh, what we did last week uh, with the announcements. But before I get there, we want to welcome everybody. We want to welcome you winter birds, snowbirds, who are returning. So if you're returning this week, it's great to have you back. And, uh, and, and so we want you to know that you're, you're not a guest, you're, you're home people, you're family. So it's great to have you here today. If you're visiting with us today, we want you to know you are our special guest of the hour, and we would really appreciate it if you could fill out this yellow visitor's card. But I think as I look about, I see mostly home folk. So that's, that's good, but at the same time, we want visitors to come in. So please keep inviting people in the neighborhood because we want visitors to come through our doors. If you came in through the door today, you were given one of these offering envelopes for Connect. And, uh, and we'll come to that slide in a minute, and I'll talk about it more. Um, let's go to the slides now. Let's go to our, to our slides. I'm going to, uh, can we put it here on this screen too? There we go. Happy birthday, Bill Vanny and, uh, is, is in California celebrating his birthday with his, with his great grandson, I think. They have, the, they have the very same birthday. Happy birthday, Bill Vanny. Um, Bob Kerr, uh, Barbara Kerr, uh, birthday is the 18th. Happy birthday, Barbara. And uh, Betty Slay, the 19th. Mary Glaser, happy birthday, Mary, wherever you are, uh, the 20th. And uh, Barbara Keith, the 21st. Let's keep going. Happy birthday, Barbara Keith. This week, we have drive through prayer tomorrow morning. We have the Gardens Bible Study tomorrow at 3.30. We got Band of Brothers at 9 a.m. We always have room for more. Now, I'm also, hold it right there, I'm also considering starting an evening Band of Brothers. An evening Band of Brothers. If you are interested in, in taking part in the evening Band of Brothers because the, the Tuesday morning doesn't work for you, please let me know, okay? And then, uh, Women Connect Through Games is this week at 9.30. Wednesday Supper Bible Study we're having, we'll, we'll show you that slide in a little bit, it's, uh, baked potatoes. Keep going. Then uh, we have prayer team, uh, that should have actually taken that off. We're no longer doing prayer team on Thursday mornings, we're doing prayer team uh, on Wednesdays at the supper. We're, we're, we're dividing up the prayer requests and giving out to all the tables, and then uh, we pray, pray around the tables for 20 minutes so we can get them all done, and it multiplies our prayer efforts. So I'm, I apologize for having that on the schedule there. Stewardship committee meeting at 10 o'clock, uh, English as a second language, Bible study, uh, 1.30 worship team rehearsal, 2 o'clock choral team. Friday, this Friday, uh, you'll see another slide for a movie matinee, My All-American. No activity scheduled for Saturday, but I am trying to get a group together to go to see The Letterman this coming Saturday at the Higley Center of Performing Arts. If you're interested in going to see The Letterman with, uh, with several other people, let us know. You know, The Letterman, right? Great group? Yep. Okay. Here's our drive through prayer. You can come for prayer as well. If you don't want to be a part of the prayer team, you can come for prayer in your car and drive through and we'll pray for you. Our Wednesday Bible study this week, I mean our Wednesday supper this week is uh, potatoes. We're going to have a spud fest. All right. And then uh, here's the band of brothers. Uh, I thought I'd throw that funny slide in there. And, uh, and it's open for all men ages uh, uh, three through 99. <laughs> and then we have choir. We need men in the choir. We, we need women in the choir too. So please, if you've been sung in the choir before, please uh, do, not, uh, do not take your voice out. This is what all this is for. We are, exp we are widening the rows of each row in the choir loft so that it has, it gives easier access or egress in and out of the choir loft. That's why all this is being done. It's being done for your safety, those who sing in the choir. All right, because we had three people last year just about bite the dust trying to get in and out of the choir loft. So uh, please know we're doing this. And, and even if it were just one person, it's worth it to do it and do it, make, it, make enough room for everybody, okay? All right, we have new member class today after church, and then next week as well will be the last one. Oh, I didn't know I'd, that was still in there, I'm sorry. 
Um, this is where we promote the Arizona mission offering. It's called Connect. September of this year, this is the month we're in, we're promoting the Connect uh, offering. You should have gotten a little flyer with it. It shows you the, the ministries that the uh, Arizona Mission Network uh, supports, and you just fill this out. Our goal is $5,000, so I hope that you will prayerfully consider giving to this missional effort. And then finally, uh, the Operation Christmas Child is asking for yarn. We don't want you to yawn like, we want you, we need yarn. We need, ah, ha, ha. And, and we, if you have extra yarn stowed away in your drawers or your, or your closets, and you're not gonna use them, please bring them to the church, we can use those. And then this is the uh, Operation Christmas Child uh, promo for what we can use this month, what we're collecting this month, especially ivory soap, because ivory soap floats. It floats. And then we have Operation Christmas Child You Pack boxes are ready for pickup. So we have boxes ready for you to pack. And uh, there's some out in the foyer there. There's also some in Sandra's office. So if you want a, a box to pack, you can take as many as you want and pack them yourselves. Uh, this coming Friday is our next movie matinee. It's actually the last one of the summer. It's the last movie matinee of the summer. It's going to be My All-American. This is a new initiative coming October the 1st, Experiencing the Heart of Jesus by Max Licato. The books are in. You can come by Sandra's office and pay for them. I believe they are $10 a piece if you want to take part in that. Believe me, it's fantastic. Licato is just an incredible writer. Messiah in the Fall Festivals is going to be here October the 9th. That's not... That's just four weeks away, four weeks away. And you, you're, if you miss this, you're gonna miss an incredible presentation. We have somebody coming from Chosen People Ministries to present it. Now we have Bible studies all over the place. We got, we're starting the New Testament in the chronological Bible study. That's every Sunday morning in room five. We have the English as a second language Bible study every Thursday at 1230 in the conference room. This is for people who may have uh, dyslexia or, or reading problems, and they need help being able to comprehend the Bible. And then thirdly, we have the book of Acts being taught by our own Dave Wortman right here every Sunday at 8.30. I'm sorry, I didn't take that out. I apologize. I'm try I tried to take out all the animations. I put animations in all these things. Check out our website, go to fbcsl.org. And also we have a Facebook page that we really wish you would go to and like, because if you like it, other people will see that when you do that and they might say, hmm, okay, I'll go check that out. I think that's the last one, right? Okay, welcome, it's good to have you guys here. Dave? Oh, I forgot one more, my, my bad, sorry Dave. I got one more. I got a letter in the mail, and the letter in the mail is from a, uh, a doctoral student at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. He's doing a research project. His thesis is um, a problem that he's trying to answer, and it involves Christians who have gone through divorce. If there's anyone in here who has gone through a divorce, um, and wouldn't mind being interviewed as to the dynamics of what that entailed, you will be part of his research project. Now, he's got a little signatory here to be a part of that study. So if this is something that you might be interested to help him with his doctoral thesis, if you're divorced and you are a Christian, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna slap you around. I'm just gonna say you could be a part of this study. God is the God of second chances, amen? Amen. So, so if you are divorced and, and you would like to be a part of this study, so this would be a good time to help this guy. His name is David Berryman. Now I'm done. Thank you. Sorry, Dave. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard when he talked about the, the ivory soap that is needed. I said, why do these kids need ivory soap? Why can't we give them zest or something else? The reason is a lot of these kids take their showers or their baths in a river. And you know, if you, if you lose the soap in the river, you don't, you'll never get it again. But that's why it floats and that's why they can go grab it. That was an interesting topic. Our uh, opening tribute to the Lord 
is the, the wonderful cross. So please rise, that's hymn number 239. And you'll, re you'll recognize the words, when I survey the wondrous cross. You may be seated. I'm, I'm going to wonder if I can ask two men to grab. I forgot to bring it in here. It's kind of a, it's a little green box. It's about this big. It's about this high. Because Stephanie's going to talk. Wow. And so, and so <laughs> I wanted you to have something that you could just, I want, you want to stand right here? When you talk, in just a little bit? Okay, never mind. She says she, she can do, she's fine. I was going to, I was going to let her read from the pulpit so that, so that was good. No, she's good. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie's not vertically challenged. I'm short and it's okay. It's okay. That's right. Amen. 
We want to remember in prayer today uh, Jack Johnson. He had a kidney stone for which he went to the hospital and had uh, surgical, probably the same surgery I had. I can't remember the name of it. Sandra, do you remember the name of it? I've forgotten. But anyway, he probably had the same thing I had just several years ago. And then April Owens has been in the hospital, and she might still be there. Travis, is she still in there? Okay, so April Owens is in the hospital with, with a couple of issues, back and, and bladder infection. And then Sandra Bernard uh, was in the hospital uh, with shortness of breath. I'm sorry, Carol. my bad, Carol Bernard. I, I have my best friend in college, Lanny Bernard, married Sandra Bernard, married his wife, Sandra. If you're watching me, Lanny, I just, just had a Freudian slip thinking of you. So. But anyway, so Carol Bernard. She came home yesterday. Okay, very good. Well, let's lift these and others in prayer and thank God for his work in the lives of this church. Father, we thank you for the greatness and wonder of your power. We thank you that there is nothing too difficult for you. We thank you, Father, that there's nothing that takes you by surprise. And so we, Lord, offer up to you Jack Johnson, April Owens, and, and uh, Carol Bernard. And we pray, Father, that, you would, uh, that your perfect will would be done in their lives. And that you, we selfishly pray that you would grant health and vitality and that you would breathe into them strength. For you, O oh Lord, are the strength of our life, the glory and the lifter of our head. Lord, we lift our nation up to you. We pray for our nation that you would bring a great awakening. We see little hints of it in colleges and universities even in high schools across the nation where whole teams are, are coming to profess you as their Lord and Savior. We thank you for the influence that is being, uh, that is being uh, impacted across the nation to these younger, younger adults and youth who are rising up to call you blessed, who are making your name famous. May we do so as adults. May we ascribe glory and strength to your name. Oh, do a wondrous work in our time. And Lord, move evangelicals to vote. Lord, we, we, we have seen where uh, five, four years ago, six years ago, 40, only 42% of evangelicals, evangelicals um, uh, voted. And now, uh, Lord, the, uh, the numbers that don't vote has risen to over 50%. So, Father, we just thank you that... Uh, that we can uh, encourage others to, to uh, use their right as a citizen of the United States to do so. And we pray, Lord, that we would do so wisely, that we would look at issues. Lord, we pray thanking you for this country. We thank you for our Constitution. We pray, Father, that people who uh, come to office would be those who would guard our Constitution and our rights. Lord, we pray that we might continue having the right to worship freely. But Lord, whatever is written in history, and however you have declared history to be, may we find ourselves in you, and may you find in us to be always faithful. We pray, Father, that you would have in your will your perfect, your unending reconciliation between man and God shown in the life of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's continue worshiping our Lord. Hymn number 448, Before the Throne of God.
Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Amen. You can probably hear me. That's all that's important. Today I'm reading from the ESV. So I guess I don't need this. I'm reading from the ESV and I'm in Acts 4, verses 1 through 4. And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, to hear your word, to have you reach into our minds and transfer those words into our heart, Lord, to know you better to feel your presence around us, to grow in our knowledge of you. Lord, as we bring our offerings today also, our offerings of our time, our finances, our goods, and everything that you give us, we do it with a grateful heart. Everything that we own, Lord, even our breath, belongs to you. And so we gladly offer up our gifts to you in sacrifice and thankfulness. Lord, I just ask that you would bless everyone here and everyone watching, that they would feel a very real presence, that you are around them always, Lord. You never forsake us or abandon us. And every intimate detail of our lives is important to you. Every single thing, Lord. I ask that we would give as an offering also our dedication and our love and our admiration for you and our thankfulness for our salvation in Christ. And Lord, I pray if there are any who don't know you in our families, in our friend groups, in our community, in our nation, for all of those, Lord, you would bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Melissa, you could not have chosen a better song, those two songs to, to uh, use f- to introduce my sermon because that is why Peter and John upset the priests and the Sadducees because they were preaching the resurrection of the dead. And those two songs, he is Lord, he is Lord, he has risen from the dead, he is Lord. And because he's alive, I live. Those two songs are wonderful. They, they fit the sermon perfectly for today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. That was wonderful. We are in a sermon series called The New Covenant Emerging, and we're in a section of this New Covenant Emerging called The Fresh Message. And I want to go over a couple of things that we did last week before I get into my sermon. Um, last week, we looked at the the, uh, the arrival of the power brokers, the, the, the priests, the crowd wasn't listening, and, and Peter and John were still speaking to the people. You see, they told the people that the last thing we heard them saying was that the prophets from Samuel on pointed to Christ. The worshipers, but then, but then they went back and talked about Moses, so they kind of were talking about the Samuel on, then they backtracked and went back to Moses and talked about how Moses uh, spoke of the prophecy as well the prophecy of the Abrahamic covenant. And then we saw how the worshipers were heirs of the prophets and the covenant God had made with their forefathers. And then we saw how Abraham offered his only son Isaac, which means laughter, by the way, to demonstrate his love for God. And so God gave his only son to demonstrate his love to the world. Now, one thing I did not mention last week. So as we see that Abraham offered his son Isaac, which means what? Laughter. I went over that pretty quickly, didn't you? So you, I might have caught you off guard. So Isaac means laughter. Abraham was willing to offer his son laughter on the altar in obedience to the Lord. Now, I don't want to make anything uh, uh, about it to be that we, we're, we're going to be a laughing congregation. That's not where I am. I'm talking about how it pointed to Christ because to Christ, God gave his only son on the cross just as Abraham pointed to Christ by offering his only son. The laughter through the life of Isaac represents Christ on the cross. Though he gave his life in agony, complete agony, He died, but I have a question to ask. Who had the last laugh? He's alive. He's alive. He's risen. Who had the last laugh? You don't, you can't tell me it doesn't point to to Isaac. In fact, Jesus even predicted, he said, you destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Well, that got a good laugh from the, chief, from the priests and the chief priests and the Pharisees. They thought, this guy's, this guy's lost his mind, you know? But who got the last laugh? And through that sacrifice, all peoples on earth will be blessed. So let's go to where we are today. We see that at this very moment, as, as, as the Peter and John had said these things to the, to the crowd, that all of a sudden, the authorities walk in. Can you see this? I mean, all of us have seen TV soap operas or TV crime shows or stuff like that, and you, you have somebody that's upsetting the status quo. Who's upsetting the status quo? Peter and John are upsetting the status quo. Why are, are they upsetting the status quo? Because they're not, they are not degreed or qualified. They don't have the credentials. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting, isn't it, that the, the priest happened to walk in right at that point because Peter and John are upsetting the status quo because people are amazed that the man who was lame from birth, and by the way, we'll find out later that he was at least 40 years old and that he was now walking and praising God. Some miracle had occurred. 
Who are the authorities? Well, the authorities are described in the passage that Stephanie read are the priests, the temple guard, and the Sadducees, in that order. Now, the priests were upset because Peter and John were teaching when they didn't have the credentials to teach. They had not gone through rabbinic school. But let me go back to this one thought again. You remember the, the 12 ordinary guys? You remember that sermon series? And I kept saying again and again and again that there was a rabbi in Capernaum who was preaching to look for the Yeshua HaMashiach. They had been schooled under some really good teaching, these apostles, because they were all from that part except for Judas Iscariot. And so here there, you have Peter taking the lead and he's teaching about Christ and how the prophets had pointed to Christ, how he would suffer and how he would rise again. And then the official priests, the rabbinical schooled priests come in and they're all in a huff because all the people left their teaching to come and see Peter and John's teaching out in the courtyard. They should have been Actually, it was a time of prayer that they were, had been going to. But the, the, the chief priest also, the, the priest and the chief priest also read from the Torah during that time of prayer. So they were upset that all the people had left their prayer meeting and come out to the courtyard to hear Peter and John teach. Do you get the picture? I mean, it's, it's, it, it would be like this. It would be like if I thought more of myself than I thought of, of the of will of God and somehow some miracle occurred out in our parking lot, and, and, uh, and all of you guys fled out there to the parking lot, and I would get upset. Well, first of all, if God had done a miracle, I think I'd be trying to lead the pack to go out there and see it. That's me. But nevertheless, it would be like me thinking more of myself than I should and being up in a huff, right? These priests were up in a huff. Excuse me, my friends whose last name is Huff, it's not against you. I have some friends um, whose last names are Huff. And they do watch occasionally. So. so it's not you. So the priests were all angry and upset. And then the temple guards, it says, were with them. Well, the temple guards weren't necessarily upset. They weren't. Why? Because they were just doing their that's right. They were doing their job. Oddly enough, that's the same argument that German soldiers gave during, at the Nuremberg trials after World War II. We were just doing our job. We were just doing our duty. We were killing millions upon millions of Jews doing our duty. We were killing scores and thousands upon thousands of Christians. We were just doing our duty. That argument doesn't hold water. So the temple guard is complicit in the cover-up. The temple guard is complicit in the activity. The temple guard is complicit in the work of evil. But they, in their minds, were saying, we're just doing our duty. If we have an army or a military without any moral backbone, we have failed as a country. If our military has been indoctrinated to the point that they have to do their duty and keep the chain of command going, and no one will speak up when a wrong is being done. In Vietnam, a wrong was being done, killing a whole village. One soldier stood up, one army soldier. This is wrong, we, th this is not right, this, before the killing started. One soldier. They didn't have a brig to put him in, but he was held in contempt of command. And they went on and killed an entire village of Vietnamese. Our country needs to wake up. We need a moral backbone. We need to return to the founders 
foundation, their foundation, which was the word of God. And then thirdly, we had the Sadducees. The Sadducees, you see, were always sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. They, they, they had no, no theological premise for the, for the uh, resurrection of the dead, even though, even though in the oldest literature of their Torah, in the, in, of their sacred writings, should I say, let me say it that way, in the book of Job, and he says, I know my Redeemer lives, and I will see him. Job himself talked about the resurrection of the dead by making that statement. And yet the Sadducees continued to be sad. They had no hope, you see. They should have been called the no hope, you see. <laughs> so we have the authorities coming in, right? Secondly, we have the agitation's source. Why were they so agitated? Well, number one, the apostles were teaching the people, and they were in the, the priest's prayer meeting. That's why they were agitated. Now, what were the apostles teaching? Well, the apostles, the, the scripture that Stephanie read, were proclaiming the resurrection from the dead that Jesus Christ lives and that they themselves were complicit in it because remember from two sermons ago that he, he confronted them with their sin. Remember, they're the ones who holler, hollered out, crucify him, crucify him, give us Barabbas. The apostles were proclaiming Christ's resurrection. So we see then that's all part of the confrontation. Let's go to number two. Number two was the capture of the apostles. Now, don't get misled by the word capture. They weren't on the run. They weren't fugitives on the run. No, they stayed right there in the courtyard, and they, they didn't try to run. The, the apostles were captured in the sense that they were put in bonds by the guard, and they were taken to jail. And it's interesting that in this scene, we know for sure that, that Dr. Luke was very specific in his recording of history. So it's very interesting that Dr. Luke did, failed to record, which means it did not happen, because if it had happened, he would have made sure it was recorded. You get my drift? What, what did not happen in this scene? That they were taken to jail. They were not charged. Sound familiar? They were not charged. That's what's going on today in our day. And so you have people going to jail, not being charged for it. For any, not being charged for any offense and going to jail. Now, they did, Peter and John did not put up a fight. Peter and John didn't whine. They didn't uh, cry. They didn't uh, complain. They went with that they recognized the authorities and went with them. They didn't, they didn't cry out, oh, we're wrongly accused, we're wrongly accused. Nope, they went with them. Otherwise, Luke would have noted that. Peter and John were sent to jail without being charged. Peter and John actually spent the night in jail. We're going to look some more about that next week when they get out of jail. We'll, we'll, we'll look a little bit more about that next week. So number one, we saw the confrontation. Number two, we see the capture. Number three, we see the crowd's conversion. The crowd's conversion. The passage Stephanie read described this, that many believed, not just a few, many believed. And secondly, the number grew. The number of believers grew. Now, of these people that believed, Luke recorded that it was the number of, that when you count the number of men, the, the number grew to about 5,000. Now, what he's talking about here is that he's talking about the total number of believers in Jerusalem. Now, all of a sudden, they went from 
They went from 120, so they, so they went to Pentecost to, to uh, 2,500 to 3,000, and now there's over 5,000 men, about 5,000 men. That, that's only the men. It doesn't include the women and children. So what does that tell us, and in, 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 in how can we uh, use that in ap- applying it to our lives today? Well, some of you may greatly disagree with me on this, and, and that's fine if you do. But I personally believe that when men get involved, and I, this is not a slight against women at all, because I'm gonna, I got, there's two sides to this coin, and I'll, I'll give you the other side in just a minute. But when men get involved and men start standing up for as they should stand up, things change. Things happen. God uses man. He created man first. He created woman second from the rib of his side. God has a plan for men. God has a plan for women. And believe me, when women get involved, things really change. You know... Women might, I've heard it said, man might be the head of the family, but women is the neck, and they can turn that head any way they want, right? So that's what I'm talking about. When men make a stand, and men make a stand for Christ, things begin to happen. When women join them, and the families join them, it exponentially changes the whole equation. So together, as men and women of Christ, we can make a difference in this world. As men and women of Christ, we can make a profound difference in this community of Sun Lakes. We can. I hope you'll pray about that issue. I hope that you'll pray about that very idea that we will be change agents in society. If there's five words that I would leave with you today, five words... that will stay with you this week. It would be these five words. Many who heard the, I mean, many who heard the message. Many who heard the message. That's our goal, is that many will hear the message. Okay? Go ahead and put that, uh, maybe I got it wrong. Put it up there. there. Uh, The number of men grew. So many who heard the message, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. I had, two, I had two five understandable word phrases that I had outlined, but really I'm, I'm more interested in many who heard the message, meaning that it's incumbent upon us to get the message out. You can't have the second five words, the number of men grew, unless you're getting the word out, okay? So we have, it's incumbent upon us to get that message out, and the number will grow. Do you want a future for First Baptist Church? Well, we can pray, and we can say, Lord, please increase our numbers. And I do pray that. And I pray that supernaturally he'll draw people in through these these doors. There are some initiatives that we are seeking to to use to do that. One of them is a new Bible study using uh, Max Licato's book. One of them is uh, an idea that we're trying to bring into reality, which is a electronic digital sign because we'll have more visibility to our community as they're driving by if we can have some type of, uh, of electronic sign that people and you might say oh that's nothing that's just getting into the 21st century well actually um, the studies that have shown that churches that do have the electronic signs people do pay attention to the messages upon those signs and we have over 10,000 people driving in front of our church every week every weekday and so if, if we can if we can capture their sight and share our message to 10,000 people, especially when part of that message is the Word of God, I believe that God can use that contemporary form of advertisement into an eternal form of changing lives. Unfortunately, we just got back a a bid from one sign company for for what we wanted to uh, do, uh, because I wanted a three I wanted a three-platform sign, one on this side, this side, and one facing that way, and it was over $100,000. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, maybe, I'm, I, maybe I'm of little faith. We do have $35,000 already given, already given and ready to be used to buy a sign. So it looks like if we go with another company and, and try, to, try to maybe 
uh, bring the size of the sign uh, down a little bit, we might make it to 60,000, okay? And so, yes? Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, and they're, they're electronic? Oh, okay. Okay. We got a lead right here. That's right. That's good. We got a lead for a sign right there. Amen. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Travis. All right. So remember these five words. I changed them. Sorry about that. Many who heard the message. If we can't get the message out, many won't hear. So we have to use multiple, we have to use redundancy in how we get the message out. Redundancy means we, we speak that message again and again and again, but in different forms, in different ways. We use a church sign, right? We might use a banner over the, the, the parking, uh, the the drive-through of the parking in front of the lobby. We might use flyers. We might use ads in the splash. We might use personal squares that Dave and I would take around to the different clubhouses and invite men to made of metal. Any way we can get the message out so that people can come into these walls and hear the word of God and hear life in Christ and that the Holy Spirit would then might ignite their heart to profess Jesus as the Lord, that's what's important. May God bless our efforts in doing so. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how it has eternal value. We thank you for the strength of it. And Lord, we're, we're resting in you that you are going to make the change so that we might know the power of Christ, not only in our lives, but witness it through the power of changed hearts and changed minds coming into the doors of this family of faith. For it's in your holy name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. let's stand together and sing our last two songs. The last two songs. First one is The Solid Rock. And you all know that one. And that's uh, hymn number 511. On the second song, we're only going to sing two verses.
shall come with trumpet sound. No, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the seat of belt buckled around the, the, the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and re requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. God bless you all. Have a great week. Amen.